Hello everyone, my name is Techno and today we're going to create a site-to-site -site VPN and this is a speedrun edition so if you're looking for an explanation I already do have a video about that where I go in depth of why I create certain things and how it's done on the AWS side. But in this video today I'm going to show you exactly how to create a site-to-site -site VPN and I'll just go through everything really quickly so that way you'll be able to see me testing from two AWS EC2 instances but this is all done on the cloud and not on-prem because I don't have on-prem device. So with that being said, let's go ahead and begin. Right off the bat, I already have two VPCs that I already created. And I've already created two EC2 instances over here on VPC2 or on the 192.168.0.0 slash 16 network. This can be considered as your on-prem device. So because VPC2 is going to be acting as your on-prem device, you want to make sure that one EC2 is considered as your router or your firewall that connects to AWS because in the real world situation when you have a site-to-site -site VPN, you're going to have a router which has a public IP address that will be able to connect with AWS. So I'll go ahead and show you exactly what I'm doing right now, um, what should already be configured. So as you can see, I already have VPC1 and VPC2. So I'll just rename this for simplicity, so VPC2 dash on-prem, so that way we don't get confused between VPC1 and VPC2. Um, likewise, for VPC1, I'm just going to call this VPC1-AWS, so that way we know this is the AWS site and then VPC2 is your on-prem site. Of course, if you do have an on-prem site, you don't need to create VPC number two. Now, the next step is to go to your EC2 instance and create all the EC2 instances that you'll want to establish connection or connectivity with each other. Now, keep in mind that these two EC2 instances, EC2 one and EC2 have already been created. So I'm not gonna go through the steps on creating EC2s and whatnot. If you haven't already, just go ahead and check out my other video for an in-depth explanation, as I said. So I'm just gonna go ahead and launch these instances or bring them up. So I'm gonna click on start instances. And the only thing that I will be creating now is your router or your firewall, which is in this case, a strong swan EC2 instance. We can go ahead and call this strong swan. Scroll down and go to Amazon Linux 2 because Amazon Linux 3 does not support strong swan anymore. Remember that this is just for demo purposes. I don't have a Cisco ASA, nor do I have like a Palo Alto router for testing purposes. So this is why we're going with strong swan since it's free. So we can go ahead and click on key pair. I already have a key pair already. If you don't, go ahead and create one right over here where it says create new pair. Network settings, we're gonna go on VPC number two, which is your on-prem IP address or on-prem site. Subnet should be in a public subnet so we can SSH into it. As far as security group, I already have one in place that allows SSH as well as ICMP. And one more thing is whenever you create this EC2 instance, make sure that it has a public IP address. So over here where it says auto assign public IP, click on enable and you're good to go and launch this EC2. So going back to my diagram, you should already have three EC2 instances created. One on your AWS, AWS VPC and two of them on your on-prem VPC. We're gonna go on the left hand side where it says customer gateway and create a customer gateway. This customer gateway is so that AWS knows what the IP address is for your on-prem site. So if we go back to this strong swan EC2 instance that we created, you'll notice that the public IP address is this 100.24.10.19 IP address. So we go back to the customer gateway tab, type in strong swan or any kind of naming convention so that way you know that this is your on-prem router, and then paste the IP address, and we can ignore the certificate ARN and everything else and create this customer gateway. Same thing on the left-hand side, go down to virtual private gateway, click on that create a virtual private gateway and call this VPG or anything you'd like to call it. So on the top right corner of your screen, you can click on attach to VPC and we want to attach it to your VPC-1 AWS because in a real world scenario, your virtual private gateway can only connect to one VPC. In this case, we want the AWS VPC to be connected, which is VPC number one. So once that's attaching, the last thing that we can do is create site-to-site -site VPN. So on the left-hand side, again, right below virtual private gateway, click on site-to-site -site VPN connection, go to the top right and create your VPN connection. Call this site-to-site 
dash VPN or anything you'd like to call it. Click on your virtual private gateway that was created, customer gateway, same thing, the one that we just created. In this demonstration, I'll show you how to create a static site-to-site -site VPN in South Dynamic. Static prefix, we, we're gonna just leave it as is for now. The local and remote CIDR. So the local CIDR would be from your on-prem device. And if we look back at this diagram, it should be the 192.168 IP address range. So on this local CIDR, you can go ahead and type in 192.168.0.0 slash 16. You could also leave as quad zeros, but if we want to imagine as if this was a real world situation, it's more ideal to have your on-prem IP address range. In this diagram, it's the 10.0.0.0 slash 16 network. Okay, tunnel one and tunnel two options. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it as default. I'm not gonna make any changes to it. Lastly, just click on create VPN connection. So we're almost there. We created a site-to-site -site VPN. We already know that it's attaching to the VPC, which is VPC number one or the AWS VPC. And over here, we can see that this StrongSwan EC2 has been created. Now, Keep in mind that when you click on the StrongSwan EC2, you should go onto Action, Networking, Change Source and Destination Check, and click on the checkbox for Stop. The reason why we want it to stop is so that if traffic is heading towards any EC2 instance that's not the StrongSwan device, packets will not automatically get dropped and it will just forward it to the next destination. The next step is to connect to the StrongSwan EC2 instance. Click on connect, and if you see this bird icon, that means you successfully connected to your EC2. Keep in mind that you need to allow SSH onto your security group and make sure that your network ACL is quad zeros for both inbound and outbound roles. So now that we can confirm and connect to this EC2 instance or the StrongSwan EC2 instance, which is pretending to be your on-prem customer gateway device, we're, the last thing that we need to do is configure this EC2 so that way it's configured to use StrongSwan and we can go ahead and establish that site-to-site -site VPN connection. So go back to your site-to-site -site VPN, click on download configuration, scroll down. Hey everyone, this is Future Brandon. I just want to give a heads up that you should be using OpenSwan instead of StrongSwan. Now that we've logged into our EC2 instance, we're going to go ahead and start configuring according to this file. So we're going to go ahead and click on sudo or type in sudo su. Go to systemctl.conf. So sudo nano paste and then hit enter. Copy all these three lines. I know that down here already has it, but go ahead and just delete it for safety measures and then paste everything as needed. Control X, Y and enter. And then it says to apply changes by typing in systemctl dash P. And after step one, I did forget to do one important step, which was to install OpenSwan. So we can go ahead and type in sudo yum install Open Swan. Hit Y for yes. Okay, now that we're done, we can go ahead and start following step two or step three now. So open up this ipsec.conf, control C, sudo nano paste. After opening up this file, we can go ahead and copy this line over here, paste it. And then we're gonna remove this hashtag or pound sign, control X, Y, enter. Now we have to create a new file, aws.conf. So control C, sudo, nano, same thing again, paste, enter. And then we're gonna go ahead and type in the following values. So after we open up this file, one thing that you should modify on the notepad is to go over here where it says left subnet, which is your local network. Local mean your on-prem IP, which is the 192.168.0.0 slash 16 IP. And then right below that is your AWS IP address, which in this case is 10.0.0 slash 16. So then go ahead and copy everything else. Control C, paste it in here. And then Control X, Y, enter. Lastly, on step five, we have to create a new file, sudo nano paste and enter. Copy this line. Once you paste it, click on control X, Y, 
enter. One thing that I did forget to mention is that over here where it says auth equals ESP, go ahead and remove that. And then save everything, control X, Y for yes and enter. Okay, so now that this is established for tunnel one, if you want to do the same on tunnel two, you're more than welcome to do so. Just do the same exact thing for tunnel one, except do it for tunnel two. Lastly, we need to go ahead and start our site-to-site -site VPN by typing in sudo systemctl start ip set. Okay, so this is our first error that we've encountered, which is fail to start internet key exchange protocol. So I'm gonna go ahead and recheck every single step that I made because I probably did make a typo of some sort. I might've not noticed it. We're gonna go from step five all the way down to step uh, step one and see what happened or what's the issue. Not sure if these, cha uh, these spaces make a difference, but I'm just gonna go ahead and control X, enter. And then lastly, step two says system ctl dash p. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start the IPsec again. And that did the trick. I don't know if it's because I forgot to put in the system ctl dash p, but I just went through step five and went backwards to make sure I didn't make any typos and repasted everything. So now if I go ahead and type in sudo system ctl status IPsec, it should now say active and running. If we go ahead and go to the site to set VPN and refresh the page, it now says available. Available just means that the site to set VPN is created. It's not modifying, it's not getting deleted. That's not the main focus. The main focus is on tunnel one. So I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this tab, click on the site to set VPN, tunnel details. Right now it shows us down, but I'm pretty sure if we wait for a little bit, it's gonna go into the up state. So if you notice over here, we go to EC2 number one, networking, go to the subnet ID route table, click on this route table, open up this route table, go to routes, edit routes. So rather than forwarding traffic to the VPC peer, because this was done in my previous video, instead of performing VPC peering, this is now going to be done through a virtual private gateway. In this case, click on virtual private gateway. And over here, this is the virtual private gateway that we created at the beginning of this video and then click on save changes. So right now we just created a static route that forwards or forces traffic from your AWS VPC number one to forward traffic over to VPC number two or your on-prem site. Let's go ahead and double check our site to set VPN and check on tunnel one to see if it actually came up. So over here, if we refresh the page one more time, click on site to set VPN, tunnel details, Look at that, it says tunnel one is up. So now that we created the site to site VPN, the last thing that we're doing is sending traffic. So for simplicity reasons, I'm just sending ICMP traffic. So earlier, we already know that EC2 instance number one should now know how to forward traffic over to the site to site VPN. But on the return traffic, we need to make sure that the EC2 instances know how to forward traffic from a specific EC2 instance out to the site to site VPN. Because in a because on your on-prem side, of course, you're gonna send traffic to your firewall. If we go ahead and go to EC2 instance number two, go to networking, click on the subnet ID, and then go onto the route table, edit this route table, click on routes. So right now we have a VPC peer, but I don't want that VPC peer to be there because that would defeat the whole purpose of a site to site VPN. So we're gonna go ahead and eliminate this and put in instance. So after you copy the open swan ec2 instance you can go ahead and click over here and make sure that this says well right now it says strong swan on the the name we are going to go ahead and go on to ec2 instance number two security group look at the ingress rule and allow icmp because in my previous video i removed it but i forgot to add it back in so click on all icmp ipv4 from anywhere of course you don't want it from anywhere you want this specifically from your on-prem or AWS IP address range. But for demo purposes, of course, I'm just gonna go ahead and put it as quad zero. So let's go ahead and recap and discuss what we've done so far. So as of right now, we have three EC2 instance that were created. We have EC2 instance number one, number two, and this one called OpenSwan VPC. We already know that a site to site VPN was created. We configured OpenSwan to establish that site to site VPN connection with the AWS VPC number one. So all we're doing now is making sure that the route tables on VPC number one is forwarding to a virtual private gateway. And on VPC number two, we're forwarding traffic to the EC2 instance, the OpenSwan EC2 instance. So this means that anytime traffic should be going out 
to the side-to-side -side VPN, traffic should be going to the OpenSwan EC2. And by creating VPC2, we've been able to create or replicate a on-prem. So now the last step is to send ICMP packets. Keep in mind that your security group should already be allowing for ingress and egress for ICMP. So if you don't have it already, go ahead and do that now. So to make sure that we are now establishing this ICMP test, we're gonna go on to EC2 instance number one. This is your AWS EC2, by the way. So pretend as if you want to connect from AWS to your on-prem. We're gonna go ahead and copy the EC2 instance private IP address. And this is in your on-prem site, by the way. So the 192.168 network. Ping. And now you'll notice that traffic is now forwarding. Quick pause. This is a ping test from the EC2 instance number two to the OpenSwan EC2 instance. Okay, so for the last step over here, if you click on static route, this is a side-to-side uh, -side VPN where it's using static routing. So you want to make sure that you click on static routes and you put in the on-prem or the VPC number two IP address range and place it over here and then click on save changes. So once you go ahead and do that, I'm just going to go ahead and start pinging the on-prem device. So copy this IP address, paste it, and hit enter. And it looks like we can ping EC2 number two or the on-prem site. And same thing again, we're just going to go ahead and ping from the on-prem site over to the EC2 instance number one. So once we go ahead and paste that, we can confirm, we can go ahead and confirm that the ICMP ping is working. And that is how you create your site-to-site -site VPN speedrun edition. I hope this information was helpful to you because I know that in my previous video, I didn't really show my final test results. Basically at the very end, just like what you saw at the static route, I just forgot to add in that static route and I didn't show it because I deleted my EC2 instances at the time I created that video. But now that I've go, gone ahead and done the same exact thing on this video, you should now be able to create that site-to-site -site VPN as well as understand how to ping from AWS to AWS even if you don't have an on-prem site to actually use. I hope my video was helpful to you. If you found it helpful, like, subscribe, and comment on my video, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.